Continuing with uh, what we've been discussing with triangulation and triangulating the location of the sun in particular, let's now do uh, the same thing, but with math. In the previous video, uh, the previous two videos, I showed how we can use triangulation with just a protractor. And that is designed for the you know everyday person who just maybe doesn't feel so comfortable with math, but wants to get in on this stuff and maybe wants to verify that all of this math stuff is really correct. You can do it all with paper, pencil, and a protractor. But now, for those who are math curious, let's take a look at this. Warning, the following does contain math, but not a lot. It's really not that bad. We are going to use nothing more complicated than trigonometry. So. Uh, we will be seeing some tangents, arc tangents, and some sines here. First of all, the first step is to, to measure the stick and measure the shadow. And from that, we are going to try to get this angle that represents the angle of the line back up towards the light source, back up towards the sun. Uh, and we did that with a protractor, but we can do that with simply the opposite divided by the adjacent is the tangent of the angle. And so if you know your trigonometry, then the tangent of the, of, the, of the angle here is the opposite over the adjacent where there's a, right, there's a right angle right there. So that's that, that's all we really need. Um, and so how do we get the angle, right? Uh, we, ha we are given the, the length of the shadow, we are given the height of the object, the unknown is alpha, so let's get alpha with an arc tangent or inverse tangent. So on your calculator, you got a scientific calculator, that's the inverse tangent button, the tan minus one, it probably says on there. So you just take the H over L, inverse tangent, bang, there's your alpha. Um, let's move on to how to now use that to triangulate. So here we are, we have two locations. These are the two locations, a known distance apart. We know this distance. We don't know this distance. We only know this distance. Um, and we know these two angles because we just did that arc tangent that we learned from the previous slide. We measure the shadow uh, that was cast here that by a stick. We put a stick right there and then we measure the shadow and use that to calculate this angle. We put a stick over here, measure the shadow, arc tangent gives us that angle. So we are looking for H based on these three inputs. And how can we do that with a little bit of math? Um, I'm gonna start off by, I wanna get this angle, which I call beta one. And you can see that this is a straight line here. So that means uh, beta one plus alpha one has to add up to 180 degrees. So beta one here is 180 minus alpha one. So let's just, Put that in. Uh, alrighty. Uh, now I want this angle. I call it gamma. So up here, this angle we'll call it gamma. Now because this is a triangle, and the internal angles of a triangle have to add to 180 degrees. So therefore, gamma is 180 degrees minus alpha minus beta one. Let's put in what we know beta one to be. And hey, look at this, the 180s can drop and gamma is simply alpha one minus alpha two. Let's put that straight into the diagram. All right, we now have all three of the angles of our triangle and uh, we have one of the sides. We can get the other sides using the law of sines. The law of sines, in case you don't remember that one uh, from trigonometry, it says that the sine of the angle divided by the length of the opposite side is the same for all three combos of the triangle, right? So in this case, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna say, let's label these sides. Let's label this side C1 and this side C2. These are unknowns, but this side D is a known. So I'm gonna say the opposite angle alpha one minus alpha two, we'll take the sine of that and divide by this distance, D. So the sine of this angle divided by this distance is the same as 
the sine of this angle divided by this distance. Okay, that's the law of sines. Okay, um, the unknown, all this is all, this is all known except this. The unknown is C1, so let's solve that for C1. There is C1 expressed uh, using all of the input values. So our C1 is right here, this length of this side. Next, if we look right over here, we'll see there's a right triangle right there. And we have this angle alpha one, and we now know the length C1. And that's the hypotenuse of our right triangle. The sine of the angle is opposite divided by hypotenuse. So the sine of alpha one is opposite divided by hypotenuse. Okay, the unknown now, this is now known, this is now known, the H is the unknown. So let's solve this for H. And there you go, H equals C1 times the sine of alpha one. Let's insert what we know C1 to be. And there we go. We now have the height of the sun in terms of only the known angles and the distance between the observation sites. So we can triangulate given any two locations, any two locations, we can triangulate and calculate the exact height of the sun based on those two observations. And what we'll be looking to do is do it from many different pairs of sites, like lots of different places, and see that they all are within uh, an error tolerance of each other. So let's see me put this into action. Here are the numbers I measured from last night's uh, measurements. And I have, uh, I have measured the Lego piece with seven centimeters tall, and the white one has a 12 centimeter shadow. Applying the, the arc tangent that I just learned, I calculate that the, the angle here, which I'm gonna call alpha two, the angle is 30.26. Let's remind ourselves when we use the protractor, we came up with 30. So yeah, that's good, that agrees. This should be enough if you're not confident with trigonometry and you're saying to yourself, maybe this, maybe he's pulling a fast one on me. The protractor is your way of saying, no, this checks out. This absolutely, this checks out. Let's take a look at the, the black one. Um, the, dif the, the difference here is the shadow was a little shorter. So we plug in those numbers and we get now 39.81 degrees and we had said 40 degrees with the protractor so that's pretty good i think that's definitely within within the air tolerance possible with on the protractor uh, yeah again confirmation that this arc tangent formula whether you've learned it before and forgotten it or you never learned it at all we can be confident that it works because we measure it with a protractor and it checks out. Next, what I want to do is let's apply the, the triangulation formula with my measured angles and my measured distance and calculate now what is H and see how that compares to the estimate that we did using the protractors. Here's the numbers from the previous slide. Plug in those in and you get 128.35 centimeters. When we measured the actual height with a tape measure, we had 123 centimeters, which is an error now of about five centimeters. That's a 4.3% error. Ironically, when we did this just with the protractors, we came in a little bit closer at 2.4% error. So that tells us that the protractor method of approximation is really it's just fine within the the tolerance that we get the air tolerance that we are looking for uh okay so that, that also gives you a sense of about what kind of accuracy we can do with this kind of system we can improve that accuracy by refining our measurements more carefully uh, or increasing the lengths so uh, i had a seven centimeter tall measurement here and so one millimeter of seven centimeters is a significant difference. Whereas if I had, say, a meter, like if I used a meter long stick, 
that will increase the precision and allow us to refine that target more carefully. So that's really the big keys. Uh, so I'm going to want everybody, when you go out there and do these measurements, try to measure as accurately as you possibly can and keep those sticks. Make sure that your, your shadow stick is very, very vertical. Um, uh, we don't want any error cre creeping in from there. Uh, okay, so very vertical, very precise measurements if possible, and the longer the better. Uh, the, the longer your stick is, the more accurate it will be because that, that's the amount of error on your measurement is a smaller fraction of the overall amount. Okay, and I guess lastly, I should say, we'll increase our precision by the same token by having longer distances between the objects. Um, and so that means let's get lots of observations from lots of different places, and then uh, we can put all those together and see what we got.